Hello, I'm going to present our work on stability design of uh, high strength steel uh, beams. I would like to acknowledge my co authors and thank them for the help in this work. Um, so, why high strength steel? Steel has been constantly improving, and according to the World Steel Association, 75% uh, of the steels that we use nowadays did not exist 20 years ago. Uh, we have it available because as high strength steel is produced according to the European standard, uh, EN 10025 uh, has been covering the quenched and tempered steel as well as uh, thermomechanically rolled steels. And we have the design code, which at this current stage is um, a little behind. We have part 112 uh, that is dedicated to high strength steel. Uh, however, not in all cases, we have recommendations for um, high strength steels and also for the ones that we have recommendations. They have been developed uh, some time ago and probably they need adjustment uh, since in the last few years we have had several projects and uh, teams working on, on high strength steel so there is really what to add. This work uh, was developed in the scope of the European project uh, Strobe, Stronger Steels in the Beam Environment where the University of Coimbra was partner and it was focused uh, on the stability of high strength steel members. So in this presentation, I will focus on the experimental program that we carried out. I will also show you briefly the numerical model that was calibrated based on the, these experimental results. And finally, uh, we'll have a um, discussion regarding the design resistance. Our uh, experimental program covered columns, beams and beam columns. Uh, full-scale uh, buckling tests. Uh, we also um, characterized the material properties. We uh, characterized the geometrical dimensions of the beams and imperfections. Uh, we made uh, uh, use a uh, uh, scanner to obtain a digital uh, model of the real beam. And we also measured the residual stresses of all, almost all of our members. The uh, members were fabricated from steel plates, which were cut and welded together into a nice section. Dissection section was welded with initial length, which include part that was for buckling test and another part that was used for the residual stress measurement using the sectioning method. This length uh, was chosen so that this boundary conditions will not affect the measurement which was done here at the middle of this uh, specimen. Regarding the buckling test, we wanted to test um, simply supported beam. So it was simply supported and we applied concentrated loads at one meter apart from, from these supports and we had uh, here a span of uh, four meters for our beams. And then uh, regarding the supports, uh, we had a simple support, which allowed the out of plane uh, displacement for the beam uh, and also um, the in plane rotation was uh, free. At the point of load application, uh, we had um, applied uh, uh, using hydraulic jack and uh, we had um, a lateral displacement were uh, blocked. However, the free sliding in the vertical direction was allowed. At the central uh, two meters of the beams, uh, we have uh, had on one side of the web um, uh, glued string gauges and on the other side there was um, a 
used a digital image correlation system so that for the members which had uh, slender web we could uh, see uh, local um, deformations uh, forming. So this is the list of um, our uh, members. So we had uh, two steel grades, S460 and S690, as well as a hi hybrid members, which were used for this um, uh, this this section of uh, height of 700, and also a set of monosymmetric sections. We had two rolled sections and their um, welded equivalent, uh, welded equivalent using 460 and 690 grade. So basically we had four groups of section, so the B1, B3, that was the IPA equivalent, then the HEA equivalent, um, these two were uh, 750 height and uh, monosymmetric sections. And for all of those, uh, we measured the residual stresses. Regarding the buckling test results, in all cases, we have observed lateral torsion buckling, global mode, and uh, in general, the results were uh, quite consistent, meaning that the, for example, the rolled and the, and the welded sections that were 460, they had quite similar resistance and the S690 member had uh, much higher resistance. Um, in the sections that were HEA, we also observed uh, lateral torsional buckling. However, in this, since they had lower uh, slenderness, uh, there was a um, large uh, deformation and at um, <coughs> At the end of the experiment, there was uh, this uh, local deformation at mid-span. Uh, regarding uh, the sections that were um, uh, monosymmetric, uh, we seen in in some some beams uh, development of local deformations uh, and then global buckling, whereas in others. It was purely um, global uh, global mode, which was actually re reflecting the the level of local uh, initial imperfections in those in those members. So these results were used to calibrate numerical model, which uh, is is then further used for. Um, uh, parametric studies, but this is not part of this presentation. Um, the numerical model was developed using shell elements uh, where the real properties uh, were used, including the material and geometrical um, properties. The boundary conditions have reflected the, the conditions that we had in the tests, where the supports were placed at the extremities of the beams and the lateral displacements were prevented at the point of the bold application. Regarding uh, residual stresses, uh, two different patterns were, were tested, uh, one using the measured residual stresses and another using the ECCS recommendations with the maximum tensile stress of 235 megapascals. Uh, geometrical imperfections, uh, also two uh, strategies were used. One was uh, using the digitalized uh, model of the member. Um, the measured imperfections were interpolated according to the beam mesh and included in the, in the model. And the other was using the the uh, buckling first global buckling mode as imperfection and introduced with um, amplitude of L over 1000. In all cases, we could have uh, quite good agreement between the numerical and experimental results when we use the measured imperfection and the measured residual stresses. 
and then we further explode combination for these um, imperfections and what we saw that in general using the L over 1000 with the buckling mold and the residual stresses from ECCS gives a conservative estimate for the member resistance. We went further and tried to compare how our uh, measurement compared to the, what we have in the Eurocode right now. And we used the general case and special case, and in all cases, our um, test results were safe sided. However, it should be noted that um, for the special case, they were not as uh, conserv conservative as for the general case, which um, is expected. So, in conclusion, we had 12 um, full scale tests. We measured, we saw that. Uh, Residual stresses can have lower impact for higher strength, higher strength grade. Um, in all the, in all the cases, we observed the expected lateral torsional buckling mode. Regarding hybrid members, they can be beneficial because this doesn't affect much as the the lateral torsional buckling behavior. And uh, we saw that there is a margin for improvement of the design rules. And here I leave the note that if you would like to uh, consult this work in more detail, it's already available in the journal Tin Wall Structures, so that you can read it in more detail. And now, ready for the Q&A part. <laughs>